Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. We have once again a special guest and vaunted expert in the financial realm, Mr. Gregory Manorino, who's going to offer all of his insights on the global reset and all the financial mechanisms thereof. You know, his background is with over 25 years of experience in financial brokerage and financial services, and he is the founder of the MMRI Index that we all have grown to know and love. Now, if you are new to the podcast, please do like, subscribe, and share, and hit that subscription button so you don't miss a minute of these important updates. Greg, how you doing, brother? And thanks for being back in the podcast. I'm really happy to be here, man. Thank you so much for having me. No, we appreciate it. We, we, our audience loves you and obviously your audience as well. So um, before we get into the kind of the nitty gritty, I want to take a moment, Greg, to acknowledge you and appreciate you for taking a stand for the Lord on one of your podcasts, because we are a largely faith-based uh, uh, channel, even though we don't really propagate that on the financial channels as you and I have not done before, we don't shy away from our allegiances to the faith. So thank you for taking a stand for the Lord in one of your recent podcasts. Um, that being said, um, we'll glad start to do it, man. I'm glad to, you know, look, there's a lot of talk out here about Greg Monarino, but I think I kind of reveal myself and how I am through my work. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we're suppo you're supposed to look at people and, and what they're, they're producing. And uh, if, if you if you can feel the truth, man, then, you know, you're getting the right vibe. It, you know, we're not going to connect with everybody, man. And you know that we're going to get a lot yeah. of pushback. Yep. And we should expect it. We should welcome it and embrace that because you see, we have truth in our side and we can push back 10 times harder. <laughs> Amen, brother. We're definitely over the target. Thanks to great people like you. Um, so that being said, Greg, you, you mentioned something that we've been talking about in our camp for quite a while. And I also appreciate that you brought this up, which is respect to uh, Elon Musk and President Trump's recent alliance optically. Um, over the years, we've had many concerns about him, primarily with things such as Neuralink and his UBI agendas. Do you, this is going to be sort of a long question, but I'll try to truncate it. Do you think this, first of all, do you think this is even the real Elon that we're seeing? And if it is, uh, is it Trump being a case of keeping your friends close and your enemies closer? No, look, man. Uh, well, with Elon, Elon being real or not, I don't follow the guy. I don't pay him any, look. This is how I operate. I'll be honest with you. And I've told everybody the same thing. I trust my God-given intellect all the time above anything else. When something hits me the wrong way, I, you know, I just don't automatically dismiss it. I will try to convert what's going on here and, and, and allow it to come to me in many ways. Now, with regard to Elon Musk, I know this guy has a huge following. Okay, so we're going to get heat from this, you and me. I'm going to tell you right now. I've just not trusted this guy since day one, okay? I I, I have ex explained my position with regard to him, especially with the whole, you know, upside down cross on his chest. This is no Halloween costume. He had this on his Twitter picture for over a year, okay? Uh, there's, there's obviously something else going on here. And no, I don't believe that this is just a matter of keeping your friends closer. What we're hearing now, again, is is uh, the same story out of, out of both presidential candidates here, how they're both uh, empowering the Federal Reserve, which is the enemy, okay? The enemy is the Fed, period. This is an institution... I mean, you know, you, you could talk about central banking in the modern age, but we could go way, way beyond that. And this is a force that has been trying to control uh, mankind ever since the, we showed up on this planet, okay, on this earth here, we, we, our creation, okay. Now, with that, uh, no, absolutely, anyone that's aligning themselves with this guy any in any way, whether it's to keep friends closer or not, I don't buy that whatsoever. Um, I think this is this is much bigger and unfortunately much darker. Uh, we're being presented so-called solutions here by both Kamala and Trump, which have no bearing on what the root cause of the problem is. Look, you, you're a financial guy, right? I'm a financial guy. Let's talk about the two, two. There are only two, honestly, basic fundamental principles in finance and economics. And I know you you understand what I'm going to say right now. It's a stronger currency and higher rates. What we're being promised here is the lower rates and promised by both Kamala and Trump. And obviously that means a weaker currency. Their solutions are what Trump's is tariffs. Okay. And Kamala, price controls. Why isn't either of these 
whatever they may be, okay, why are they not discussing the two fundamental principles that would rebuild the economy here? Okay, look, we I understand the current situation here, and it's it, it's it's a very it's a system that has been adopted for a reason by every single so-called developed nation here around the world here, currency devaluation. Who is that? Who does that help? Wh who does new money creation help? Obviously, the Cantillon effect tells us this. You know what the Cantillon effect is. The one and two percenters here, the rest of us pay for it. Uh, unfortunately, in the form of inflation, and that's what we're seeing now, and they're not done by a long shot. What's about to happen in eight days from today mm -hmm. with the Fed FOMC meeting is, again, currency devaluation, lower rates, Who's also promising us these things? Well, Trump is. So mm -hmm. is Kamala. They're not providing a real solution. The solution's real. How many people listening to this actually believe that the solution is either tariffs or <laughs> uh, price controls? Uh, no. The solution here is the polar opposite of what the Fed wants, which is, of course, lower rates and a weaker currency, or what we'll be, we're being sold by Trump and Kamala. It's interesting how they're both adopting the same thing. They've both become advocates, just a miracle, for cryptocurrencies as well. You know Greg Manorino, everybody who knows me, knows I am a huge advocate of cryptocurrency, but there's something else going on here. Why are they both on the same page all of a sudden? The crypto king the, the, the and, and queen, it's just it's just interesting set of dynamics that are in play. The fact of the matter is the solution is in our face. The solution is we do not need a weaker currency. We need a stronger currency and obviously higher rates. But that's not what we're being told. And no one is going to point to that. No one is going to tell you the debate tonight will be devoid of that at all because people can't know what's happening to them. They must be lied to. They must be deceived. They must be told to look here. Don't look over there. And they can't be presented any real solutions. What people want is a real solution. But I can promise everyone that's listening here, it ain't tariffs. And it certainly is not price controls. What it is, is we need to rebuild. Look, how many of you are as old as Greg Manorino? I say this all the time. I'm going to be 60 next year. Okay, I remember a time when there was the mom and pop shops, when the, when small business was the backbone of the United States and the rest of the world. You want that back? Tariffs ain't going to bring it back. Price controls ain't going to bring it back. Stronger currency and higher rates would bring it back. Just like we had, I was showing the chart yesterday, and this is, I urge people to use the Federal Reserve's own website as a weapon against them, because it's all there in plain sight. Look at, let's say, the 50s, the 60s, and before we started our downward spiral with regard to currency devaluation. It used to only take one one working adult in the family to support a nice house, a brand new car, a family with three kids. Now you can't even get by with two salaries. Okay, this is part of the mechanism here to wipe us out. But look, again, nobody here has a solution to the problem, except for people like you and me, who are at least trying to raise awareness. Our, the people that follow our work, okay, they get it. Of course, we're going to get some pushback. Ex expect it. Welcome it. And understand something else, too. You want to recognize who the dark forces are. They, 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 they make themselves very evident to us. You'll see the comments. The, they can't present a logical mm -hmm. uh, counter argument. It's about hate. It's right. about curse words. It, they, again, you, you get to you trigger these. They're not even human either. You trigger these things and they come after you like that. Okay, counter Greg Manorino's argument. Anyone here who thinks I'm wrong. Okay, go back to what I just said. You really believe. And think about it. Use your own intellect. Is tariffs going to save our economy? Of course not, <laughs> in my view. Of course, price controls isn't. We need to rebuild this thing from the bottom up here. And that means, again, it's just too easy. Stronger currency, higher rates, the polar opposite of what the of what we're being sold by both presidential selectees. And this is exactly what the Fed wants. So if we embrace that, okay, hold on a second. The Fed has our best interest in mind, right? Well, of course they don't. But why are we being sold the same two things by both candidates, which is, again, lower rates and a weaker currency, which is what the Fed wants, so they can become stronger to empower themselves, to have more control over all of us. I mean, come on, man. Open your eyes, people. Period. Yeah, no, 100%. I'm glad you brought up the currencies, because we're going to talk about that with BRICS towards the end, uh, as you're aware. Uh, before we go further, I wanted you to know and your audience to know that I took your advice and have been reading, once again, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Very, very enlightening book, all about the Federal Reserve. I'm calling this, Greg, the, the financial version of war and peace. That's how I'm looking at it. 
And uh, what I thought was fascinating, we don't have to go into a long delve because this, we could do just a podcast on this, on the book, right? And then some, but it's interesting just for the audience that who have read it and those who haven't, that the men responsible for this were largely tied to the JP Morgan Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. And there were six of them, which we know is a, a demonic cabal number, speaking of, you know, light and dark. So just an interesting footnote. If you want to add anything, feel free. No doubt about it, man. Look, they, uh, they always throw those little signs out there. There's just no doubt about it. And it's good that you raise people's awareness to this stuff here. It's, it's out there. It's everything. The truth is, oh, you can't hide from it. You can't run mm -hmm. from it. You can deny it, too. All you want. You can say, oh, well, you know what? Uh, well, Greg is wrong, and we don't need a stronger currency, and we don't need higher rates. Trump's plan is good. Uh, that's going to save us all. Kamala's plan is going to save us all, too. You know, look, it's this is the it, look, it's the brainwashing. It's a psyop. It's a counterintelligence. I look, it, it shouldn't be a secret to anyone why it is that every single presidential selectee sitting president that is looking to be reselected is vetted by Wall Street. First, behind closed doors, meetings that there are no minutes, there's no notes, there's no cameras, there's nothing. That alone should tell people that there's some other agenda going on here. And then after they're vetted by Wall Street, boom, then they come to the people. Why is it? Shouldn't it be the polar opposite? That's how a real system should run if mm -hmm. it were, in fact, we the people who are being represented here. Obviously, we, it's not we the people who are being represented here. And I find I find it revolting to the highest order. And this is not new. This is this is something that's been going on for many, many, many presidential cycles, how they go to Wall Street first. And they'll, they'll, they'll take my word for this. We all know this happens. They even mention it in the mainstream media. Oh, well, you know, so-and-so is going to make their presentation to Wall Street. But I don't understand that. I mean, if this was really a, a, a nation here or a world that is supposed to be run by we the people and a free society, why is it that they go to the, the, the elites first? They have to, to be vetted. I believe it's to get a script to say, okay, this is what you need to sell to the people. Because look, I sincerely believe as well that we have no say so anymore. This is not the United States of America. This is devolved into some other kind of an entity. And for example, let's let's just look at tonight. Tonight, we're going to get this so-called debate. It's really not a debate. It's not about the issues. No one really even cares what the issues are, except for people like you and me and the people that follow our work. It's about who can insult the other one more. This is what we've devolved into and it's going to be on you know a big show for the rest of the world and then people sit back and wonder why is it that our trade deficit is ballooning why doesn't anyone want our products anymore uh, it's because would you want to buy a product from a nation that is being ruled by puppets and frankly in my mind imbeciles uh i mean that's the they're supposed to represent us right really honestly no they don't represent me neither one okay they don't represent my 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 the way i think at all um, but that's a whole other ball game. We could dedicate a whole podcast to that. Oh, yeah. But this yeah. should be no secret to people why the world is shunning us, why the world is backing away from the U.S. dollar, and this this is this mechanism is going to continue even more so moving forward, despite Trump's threat, which you probably know about, that he's going to now put a one hundred percent tariffs on nations that are circumventing the dollar. Like all of a sudden they're gonna be afraid. Oh no, well, hold on a second. We just got threatened from Trump that if we don't use the dollar, that then that's all hell's gonna break. They're laughing, they're laughing. I mean, that's, that's mm -hmm. pure, I don't even know where that came from, but it's just not gonna work. All they're gonna do is obviously circumvent the dollar even more. Now that presents an even bigger problem. And you probably know what I'm talking about already. If, yep. if the dollar now becomes used less in bilateral trade or however it's gonna work here, obviously, if it's not needed, it's going to lose value. That's why I believe in 2025, the door is open here for hyperinflationary event to occur. We have currency devaluation, which everyone who follows our work understands is going to happen here. It's already happening on a grand scale. The feds are running in here lowering rates. Is it a miracle why mortgage rates just dropped to a near two-year low? Because the Fed hasn't made the announcement yet, so it can't possibly be happening, but it is. Because the Fed right now creating cash out of nothing. They're monetizing the debt. Guess what, people? This is known as quantitative easing. Not only that, they're fully involved in yield curve control. They've met, and it, you know, it's in our face. It's right there. Just don't believe your, your own eyes because they're lying to you. Uh, but it's right there. And now we're going to get 
on uh, the FOMC meeting next week, uh, they're going to say, hey, guess what, everyone? We're going to start cutting rates. All they're going to do is give themselves permission now to do what they're already doing to a much greater degree, which is the polar opposite of what we need. But nobody, not Trump, not Kamala, is going to call them out. They're going to promise you what the Fed wants because they work for the Fed. Yeah, totally. And that was actually, thank you, Greg, because that segues into my next question. I was going to ask you about next week's decision, which we already know is priced into the market, as you've said before. I guess the main question I have about that is, do you see us having a season of rate cuts going into 2027? And what does that mean for the dollar index? Well, first of all, look, I mean, we could talk about, let's just say this. I see, I believe what's going to end up happening here is a series of rate cuts. They're going to keep the frog boiling, okay? Um, mm -hmm. I don't think, and I could be wrong on this, but I believe, look, it's not too hard to understand that the markets run off of basically two emotions. Those two emotions are fear and greed, okay? Now, fear is stronger, I believe if the Fed hits the market hard, let's say, you know, I don't, I don't even, I, I, is a half of a half of a basis, a half a basis point, whatever it might be, uh, or a quarter percent. Uh, I'm going to say they're more than likely going to do this slowly and incrementally as to not create fear in the market. But with that, I sincerely also believe that we're going to get a sell the news moment. It's already, you know, the, the rate cuts are baked in. Wall Street works off the same premise, buy, buy the rumors, sell the news. I've been telling my lines to hold fire. Uh, we've all been buying dips for years. I think there's an opportunity coming up. And I could be wrong. We, the market could go higher, but I, but it doesn't matter. I'm holding my own fire. And I've been telling people who follow my work that, um, but, in the, but that's how Wall Street works. So again, I think it's going to be slow. It's going to be methodical over a long period of time. Now, with regard to the dollar index and everything, I still believe, look, the, the dollar is going to remain the prettiest bell at the ball. But the, but collectively, we all know what's going on. Central banks are in a race to the bottom. Whoever can destroy their currency faster, I guess, is going to be the winner here because all this is leading us to is a new system. We The dollar, if you know, looking at that book that you just had and just go to the Fed's website, use their own website against them. Look at the, the dollar depreciation since just let's say 1950 okay and you look at a chart i showed it yesterday excuse me so i'm not here um we have two percent purchasing power left too they want it all and they're going to get it all and that's exactly what this mechanism is, is doing it's kind of an interesting paradox you got people out here being told that we're the envy of the world that was joe biden our our economy is the envy of the world we're strong we're, we're firing on all cylinders and uh <laughs> but so if that's the case why is it people need to ask why why is it that the Fed is about to institute what is emergency monetary policy? Quantitative easing, cutting rates, pumping, because again, they know they're in the final stage. This is the final stage, and people are going to suffer much greater moving forward. There's no way to stop what's already the, the wheels that have already been into that is more inflation here. Look, they could have stopped inflation in their tracks. Bang, just like this. If they really wanted to, how would they do that? They'd have to contract the money supply instead they're ballooning it around the world, central banks. They would have to vastly raise rates. They could have stopped inflation like this. But no, they didn't do that. They told us it was transitory. It was temporary. It's still rising by their own numbers. Not to mention the jobs market. That would they do? They just vanished 818,000 jobs. That's because our economy is so strong. You can't make this stuff up. You see, the thing is, people don't know what end is right anymore. Um, they hear one story, then they hear another. And, and unfortunately, people are getting their information from the propaganda ministry, the Fox businesses, CNBCs, the Bloombergs, or whatever it might be, the CNNs, the Foxes, and they, they, you, you don't know what's going on. They, mm -hmm. they, they're being lied to, they're being propagandized. It's the tell lie vision. It's a program. Uh, yeah. And the masses have no idea. What's, and so they're, they're left in this state of confusion. They wonder why their life is where it is. And they need somebody to blame. And that's easy. So they assign blame. You know, they blame each other. No finger pointing at the Federal Reserve. They have to re remain blameless here because they're on the side of angels. You understand? The monetary system, the economy, is not run by presidents, kings, queens, dictators, or monarchs. It's run by the central banks. When people understand that, maybe things will become clear to them, but they can't. They can't think outside the box because they don't know. They don't know what to think anymore. They've been confused in this all kinds of conflicting news. And it's meant to keep people in a, a, a dumbed down state, almost like to be willing to accept anything like Pavlov the dog, 
Mm. Uh, you know, they, they're in a state of learned helplessness, and then they need to look to someone other than the Lord to, to, to save them. Okay, no, no human being or non-human entity in this case uh, is, is, is there to save you. Your faith is in the wrong place if right. you believe that either Trump or Kamala are going to have your best interest in mind because they don't. They don't. Um, and the, tr the proof is, again, their alliance with the Federal Reserve and their alliance is in your face. They're telling you what's going on. No solution. We know what the solution is. They're going to tell you tariffs are going to work. They're going to tell you that price control is going to work. No, that's exactly what we don't need. We need to rebuild our economy. We need to bring back the backbone of the world economy, which was small business, not to fulfill the corporate agenda. Does that sound about right to everyone listening? <laughs> 100%. You know, and, and to your point, you know, that's one of the things that we're working to achieve, you and I and others, podcasters to the middle, which is regardless of who the uh, selection or who the figurehead is, become your own central bank. And then we can just try to help mitigate the collateral damage on this side of the aisle. Um, pivoting to this, uh, this question, Greg, you mentioned NVIDIA a lot in your podcast, most recently on the MMRI on them. Their stock numbers are tanking along with the latest valuation reports. Are they trying to become the next iteration of Apple? And if so, is that going to be enough to save them? Who in particular? I missed the first part. Uh, NVIDIA. Oh, NVIDIA. Uh, look, uh, <laughs> uh, look. How do I how do I say this? None of these none nothing makes sense anymore. Valuations, P ratios, forward guidance, fundamental factors, which should matter. Okay, they don't anymore. It's just based on easy money, the promise of easy money, which is obviously the po the polar opposite of what we actually need. It's a mechanism to keep people fixated on companies like Nvidia, on companies like whatever they want to throw at you here. The market itself, look at the market. It's, it's near record highs. We must be doing great. The economy is doing fantastic. There's no connection here. Now with regard to Nvidia and other tech companies, What's it going to happen here, again, via the mechanism of lower rates, suppressed rates, is this is going to open up a door for cash to make its way into tech companies. Um, it's just too easy to understand that. Uh, and, I, and I've been telling, I'm building a position here. Most everyone knows what I'm doing here. I'm an open book. Um, I started, I don't know, maybe a year ago, I started buying, uh, adding to a, a JEPQ, which gives you exposure to tech. I already have a position in JEPI as well. Again, look, nobody shares their stuff more openly than Greg Manorino. I'm not saying anyone should follow me. I'm not giving anyone financial advice. You do. I've already got myself, and you already know that, twice with the SEC uh, when I was doing, when I was putting out individual picks. Do you remember that? Yeah, well, I got I was reported uh, for front running. Can you believe that? Somebody said, Greg Manorino is front running the market. He has such a big audience that he can move a market. It's impossible. That's why I suggested every single pick I ever put out was all large cap. We don't have the power to do that. But but that's what, and so I was investigated not once, but twice. So I don't do it anymore. But I can tell people what I do, okay, without saying, okay, you know, I'm putting out specific picks. So that's what we're going to keep doing. But I, I look, with NVIDIA and all these companies here, I think there is opportunity on the long end. We can't get short this market. Anyone that you, look, short sellers um, are getting destroyed. They're getting absolutely wiped out. I'm sure they're going to have little periods where they're going to make cash right now. Seasonality. This month, I told people what would happen early in this month. I said, watch what's going to happen here. Well, the likely the market's going to... It's seasonality. You don't have to be a rocket scientist here. You just have to understand cycles, how markets work. I mean, there's, there's, there's volumes of books. I even wrote a book on this years ago, Market Cycles. Uh, it's not, I don't even think it's available anymore. But anyway, not a, a difficult thing to understand. And the mechanism, the setup where we're being pushed, what we're being told, what we're being sold, it makes it too easy. And that's a problem. That is what really people should think about. The environment is almost too easy for people like you and me and the people that follow them up to, 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 to make it work for them. Okay. It's, you have to understand, look, we need to bet against the system. You, you know that. Becoming your own central bank, period holding hard assets, uh, get out of cash, get out of the dollar. These are dying assets. They did a video on that this morning. And I said specifically that we're about to go nuclear because that's what's going to happen here as the Fed now is going to join several other central banks who are now in the process of quantitative easing in the process of dropping rates. And we're going to see their worldwide phenomenon occur here as the middle class is systematically eliminated here. This is this is, this is is an extinction level event. Uh, going back to a, a neo-feudal system System in some capacity or the other of a control system. Um, unfortunately, that's that's the setup. 
But that does not mean that there is no opportunity. I think there's opportunity everywhere. That's what really this is all about. Solutions, presenting solutions to the problems we have is just too simple, not just regard to a stronger currency and, of course, higher races, which we need to rebuild the economy. Tariffs aren't going to work. Neither is, is, is a camel is price controls. But um, they, they're not interested in that. What they're interested in here is fulfilling what they've been told to fulfill. They don't work for us. I don't care how many people may think the polar opposite. It's just not true. Uh, what we have had here, especially under the last three presidents, is a hyper ballooning of, of the debt. The, mm -hmm. the more, more than double the debt under the last three presidents. And that trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars of debt buys a lot of illusion. Sure as hell pushed the stock market higher, hasn't it? Um, as, as the middle class is getting destroyed. Well, again, I mean, under the last three presidents here, We've watched more millionaires and billionaires being created in history, in the history of this, this, this nation. Does that say something? These were supposed to be people that are going to save the middle class. It ain't happening. It's not mm -hmm. going to happen moving forward either. The issue here of currency devaluation, suppressed rates, is certainly going to be positive to fulfill the corporate agenda here. And again, it doesn't matter what even their earnings are anymore. It's just about easy money, as the rest of us pay for it all, as we always do. So... Going back to NVIDIA, tech companies, I believe there's opportunity here. Yeah. Uh, I understand that they did take a big hit lately. I told people that this was more than likely a buying opportunity. It's definitely going to play out to be that. There's no doubt about it. Um, I'm not giving anybody advice on what to do. Please take what I say and then do your own research about it. Um, and then obviously do something or or not. That That's kind of all I have to say on that. Sure. Well, thank you for thank you for sharing in an articulate fashion, as always, for these details. Staying on the crypto side uh, a little bit there, Greg, uh, obviously, you know, Bitcoin right now is the mother of all cryptos, but steadily we see XRP getting ready to make their move at, at the top of the head of the blockchain based economy powered by precious metals at some point. Uh, when the SEC does announce that they're not going to appeal, which we know they're not going, they're dragging this out, but we're thinking maybe it might be later this month when they finally, it, XRP is released. Um, what do you imagine the first uh, rate will be for XRP and how soon thereafter do you see Gary Gensler stepping down in disgrace? Look, I've been telling people, I don't know how to even say this another way. I think there's massive opportunity here across the board pretty much. And the only reason really why, and everyone keeps asking me, hey, Greg, well, why do you keep talking about Bitcoin? Why do you keep talking about Bitcoin? Is because that's all keep, Trump keeps talking about. He was the first one to start with the crypto president, the Bitcoin president. And I said, hold on, wait, wait, hold on a minute. I mean, you know, there's something going on here. So, and I understand that. Look, a lot of people don't understand the intricacies of this. Not, not many people don't even know what cryptocurrency actually is. They don't understand the space. And I get it. It took me a long time to come around too. It really, really did. If you go back and watch my work from a while back, I was, I didn't understand it. And so what did I do? I turned it off. I said, no, I don't like it. It's just not for me. Um, and then I started to hear from a lot of people. Look, I get a lot of what I say from, from people that, intrigue me okay hey greg you know what maybe you need to do a little research into this yourself maybe you need to look into this and this is why and this so i did i started saying okay why don't why should i like this space why is it that everyone's talking about this crypto space what what, what is it what is it and then i started to say well hold on a second here this is actually something that could potentially be really really good but again i mean that the pathway here is 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 kind of obvious to me especially the fact that when i have the crypto king and the crypto queen Trump and, and Kamala on the same page here. It tells me, obviously, something that we've all known for a very long time is that we are being pushed into a digital system. First of all, right now, we already almost have it. Uh, the system is 99% digital as it is. Most people don't even carry cash anymore. Um, they, they, they're swiping. They're, they want those rewards for swiping. I mean, look how tempting they make it for us okay you know what you could buy this for ten dollars in cash or you can swipe it and get a little reward people want those rewards they want those perks let's be yeah. honest here people always get what they ask for and i think that but but in this case here this is not going to be a smooth transition they need an event to occur um, i really sincerely believe this system is being hyperinflated um, by design, nothing is here is by accident here, because again, this is going to lead up to a crisis point. We're already in crisis, a full-blown liquidity crisis, and henceforth, why? You're seeing now what central banks are doing, hyper-ballooning 
the debt, the debt system here, having puppets in positions of power calling on, oh, well, you know what, we need lower rates here, we need a weaker currency too. It's insane and how people fall into it because again, of their misplaced faith. And that's gonna get, you will look back on history, I don't have to tell you, but you look back on history and people and nations who have done that, it has led to their demise. Entire nations have failed. You, this is a failed state in many, many ways here. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're the most indebted nation in the history of the world with, with a population that is now carrying their heaviest debt burdens in history here. Personal debt, household debt, consumer debt, credit card debt, ballooning air controls. That the hallmark today of a prosperous society. You gotta be kidding me. But this is what people think is normal. It is not normal. But going back to cryptocurrencies, XRP, Bitcoin, I, look, this, I know I'm going to take heat for this, like I like, do all the time, but I feel there's enormous opportunity here. Again, because it's just about the movement of cash through the markets. If we understand that we are in a deliberately engineered risk on environment, meaning cash is being pushed into the stock market via weaker currency, via suppressed rates, hyper debt kind of a situation, debts and deficits ballooning out of control. Eventually, we're going to get a meltdown here in the debt market. It's being built up like this on purpose. This And it's going to crater. It's going to come. It's going to be, I said this yesterday, maybe like the big bang. It's going to come apart so fast and so rapidly, people's heads are going to spin around like the freaking Exorcist movie. And they're not going to know what to do with themselves. This is why we need to be in the right spots now. And you got to be hedged. Again, I'm in this market. Everybody knows that. I am also in precious metals. Heavy. I am in cryptocurrencies. Pretty heavy here. I own other things too. Uh, artwork. See that? You really can't see it. But that's ship. The USS Constitution. These are original art pieces. I have them all mm -hmm. over my house. I think that they, these things are, are, are valuable. Or will at least. I think Great. other assets too. Collectibles. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I mean, to me... The most, you know, this is it, man. And why Greg Manorito chooses silver as the most undivided asset on planet is very, very simple. Um, I look at the debt market as uh, a time bomb and the stock market itself is nothing but a derivative of what's happening here in the debt market. It really derives, everything does, derives value from debt market action. Is it any surprise or secret to anybody that's listening here that it is central banks have chosen to rig that part of the market? And of course, the, you know, the Fed gets in here and buys large cap stocks when the market starts to fall. It's called a plunge protection team. It's a real thing. People mm -hmm. can look it up for themselves. Um, anyway, but eventually this debt market is going to melt down. It's going to put enormous pressure on the stock markets of the world, which is going to sell off so rapidly. People aren't going to know what to do with themselves. And cash is just going to move from one set of assets into another does not grow little beautiful butterfly wings and fly away to money heaven it just moves from one reality into another and i've been telling people it's going to move into commodities for like a thousand years it feels like to me i also believe it's going to move into cryptocurrencies in a massive way and other assets too, as I just said, it just it just just it moves from one person's reality into another person's reality, and that's all all this is, and it's a setup on an epic scale. Now, whatever event, there's going to be an event here. I think it's pretty obvious that they're going to use to blame. Whether it's going to be another this can't say these things anymore. Whether it's going to be war, expanding war, or a combination of who knows what. To blame, okay, this is why the system is coming down. It's not, of course, it can't be what central banks have been doing, hyperinflating the debt. There has to be a, a, a blame for this. It's always the same, blame, 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 blame. People need blame to be assigned because they can't walk around thinking, well, why did this happen? No one's going to take it upon themselves. No politician who ever happens to be selected at that point to be sitting behind there, but it can't be their fault. It can't be the, the central bank's fault or whoever it is. It has to be this event. And that's what they're going to use to issue in the new system. Again, we're, we're, we're on the threshold. Every day, we are mm -hmm. on the threshold of another credit freeze. And that's what people don't understand was the real backbone of what was happening in 08. It wasn't a matter of the stock market, the Dow going from 12 to 6,000. That, okay, big freaking deal. Markets crash. I get that. It was the fact that uh lending was was locking up the credit markets were locking up and that's why ben bernanke was rushed into washington here to say okay we got to inject billions into the system to free up the credit markets otherwise he said specifically by monday we won't have an economy he didn't mention the market he said an economy mm -hmm. and that's where we're going here today another credit freeze a, a, a liquidity crisis on a scale that was going to make the last one look like child's play absolutely going to say hey get guess what everybody 
we got a solution for you. And that's <laughs> going to be their digital system. Yeah. Anyway, that's how I see it, bro. I, I'm right there with you. I'm, I'm totally grinning. Okay, uh, Greg, I've asked you this question before, but it just continues to rear its ugly head. And that is in respect to uh, Japan's economy, which is coupled with the carrying of our treasury bonds, which you know is absolutely killing them and the entirety of the world. But secretly, they've been buying gold like the rest of the world, no surprise, mm -hmm. in a very surreptitious effort in order to front off the hemorrhaging of the yen. Recently, they devalued their currency, I believe, by about 22%. So the question is, how much longer do they have, in your estimation, before they completely become insolvent? And do you see them joining the BRICS at the upcoming summit in October, as it's clear at some point they're going to have to join in order to survive? I think it's probably, I think that's probably likely. I'm not going to say it's a lock, but I think it's, it would Any make sense. Probability? It would make sense based off of what we know is going on over there. Um, we'll see where that goes here. Look, the whole system, as you know, and everybody listening to this, is insolvent. It operates in a perpetual vacuum. It's a black hole. Um, and it's in, it's astonishing that people believe that the system is real. It's it, it's not real. It's just based off of the belief that it's going to function. Uh, and it's not functioning, obviously. The people of the world are suffering, except for the one and two percenters here. But And uh, unfortunately, this is going to rear its head much more dramatically moving forward, no matter what happened, no matter who's put behind the Resolute Desk, no matter what they do. This is by design. It's not an accident or a comedy of errors that got us here. Now, with regard to nations here, we're finding out a lot of stuff as of late, uh, the acquisition of gold here. Um, big banks telling their con telling their customers to buy gold. Goldman Sachs was the, is the last one. I mean, they have oh. to do that so they can see. Well, you know what? We we warned you. We told you that gold was the place to be. Uh, eventually, of course, these commodities they're real things, and this mechanism here of 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 keeping cash <laughs> out of certain particular assets that it should be going into and forcing it up into the, the, the stock market via suppressed rates, the promises of lower rates by currency devaluation just makes these assets go, oh, they're more on sale, hedge funds. The richest people on this earth are all acquiring this stuff right in front of our faces, but they don't want you in it. No, 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 you stay in the dollar or whatever currency you're in. You know, they, they want you in those central bank issued notes and we'll do things to, oh, we're, we're doing this policy to protect the dollar. Um, I mean, you can't make this stuff up, but that's where we're at here. Everybody knows it. Anyone who understands what's happening here, I mean, I hope that people who follow our work have some of this stuff. And I understand it's not easy for people right now, especially in the current environment. But it, like, like if you have a bad habit, like say, for example, you smoke cigarettes, put that quit and put that cash towards buying some silver. I still feel silver is the place to be. I love gold. Everyone knows that. And I think still my, I really and can't wait in some ways to see if what I have been saying for uh, many, many years now is going to happen. That is, we're going to get a one-to-one -one gold Dow ratio and a, a 10 or a 15 to one with regard to gold silver. Um, we got to figure out where the bottom is. I don't think anyone knows where that is. We do know where there is a hard bottom at 6,000. That's where the Fed started QE1. Now they're starting QE now too. So it really distorts the picture. I did a whole piece on this recently. It's, it's probably closer to 8,000, the Dow. Um, and that means we should get $8,000 gold. Uh, and a 10 to 1 silver is about 800 bucks. Um, you know, but this, again, I can't see a way out of this. And maybe you, you, maybe, I don't know, you would disagree, but I think we're going in a worst case scenario. There's no way to get out of it because that's where they're pushing us. They need such an outcry from the people um, as they're creating dependency on the system. That's a whole other thing that they're doing here, watching what's happening. And this is something I said would happen from about five years ago. I said, what they're going to do is they're going to make people dependent on the current system in greater and greater amounts. And I said specifically that people in the middle class are going to fall to that lower rung. So they are sincerely dependent on the system. Um, and what I also said was going to happen is members of the middle class were going to do everything in their power to try to maintain the illusion of a middle class existence. And that would mean maxing out their credit cards. And all they're doing is assuring themselves a seat in the lower rung. So the dependency on the system is key to their success. Uh, and part of that dependency on the system is it comes down to the two fundamental 
factors that we started this whole thing off with. We need to, to have a strong economy. It should make sense. When people hear things, Greg Hunter, my old friend from a thousand years mm -hmm. ago, I haven't talked to him in a very long time. I, I, and I, I, I feel very bad about that. Um, but anyway, uh, people know the truth when they hear it. To have a strong economy, we must have a strong currency. We must have higher rates, not what they're promising us here. This is a pathway to destruction. It's a worldwide phenomenon. And the, the, one, the one nation, one developed nation, I was hoping it was going to be the United States, but it doesn't look like it's going to be, who would adopt the opposite policy of the rest of the world, which is lower rates, weaker currency, same thing would be sold by Trump and Kamala, will win. That's the nation that will win, but we are being led down a deliberate pathway to uh, an extermination. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and you know, our shows are doing this, as you know, but it, it's, there's this disparate attempt that they're making to try to get rid of the middle class and have a disparity between the rich and the poor. And we just want to be on the right side of this whole thing. And, and you're right, predictive programming is their milieu. Uh, always do the opposite of whatever they're saying. It's just a kind of a, a good, you know, rule of thumb. Uh, this is probably my most important and exciting question for you, Greg. We've talked about this offline, uh, so just bear with me a minute here. But speaking of BRICS, as you know, they have a very important summit October 22nd to 24th in Moscow with President Putin leading the charge. Roughly 160 nations are being represented with well over 80% of the world's population. So here's a two-part question. Do you think this will be the seminal moment whereby they give the proverbial middle finger to the U.S. dollar stronghold that we know has enslaved the world? And wouldn't it behoove them in, in that effort if they're going to do it? Because like you said, you answered my question about Trump, you know, trying to use the tariff threat, which I don't think is going to deter them at this point. There's too much momentum. Wouldn't it make sense for those nations to nationalize their currencies in hard assets? I, I think they've got like 40% gold, 30% Chinese and Russian bonds and some iteration of silver. Wouldn't that, that be the time for these countries to power up their currencies since they're no longer relying on the dollar? It's very interesting that you brought that up because what were we just saying before that question? The, the nation or the country or the, whatever, the group of nations that, again, adopts a strong currency or a commodity-backed currency is going to win, period, the end. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. We, we, we are, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, I think I do, but I think there are just extremely dark forces that are in control here in the United States. They're bringing us to our knees. The world doesn't want anything to do with us anymore. Um, and this is, you know, a lot of people will say that, well, this is all, all policy mistakes by the Fed. None of it is a mistake. This is all deliberate here. And the fact that we now, we, we have two players calling for the same thing that's just going to foster our demise even faster in the face of what's going on here. It's just, it's, 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 what is, it's, the shame isn't even the word. It's a crime in many ways against we, the people who are supposed yeah. to govern ourselves, but we can't do that. We've lost the ability to do that. Look, I am not sure what's going to come out of this whole thing, but it would make a lot of sense that, again, understanding. Uh, and they look, people uh, people here in the United States, unfortunately, they, they, they just don't get it. They don't understand what's happening. They feel that the United States, the world, really needs the United States in order to function. And actually, I think that could not possibly be farther from the truth at all. Right. The fact that nations are, have been backing away from the dollar for quite a long time um, it, it is, is a big tell in my view. And no amount of tariffs, whether it was 100% or 5,000% by Donald Trump threatening the world that if you don't use the dollar, we're going to put these huge tariffs on you, is going to automatically make these nations start to use the dollar. I think they're gonna, that's going to make them back away from the dollar even more. I agree. And faster. And yes. that just means the currency will lose its value even faster. Mm -hmm. This is something, I don't believe that Trump is a stupid man. I've told people this a million times, okay? He knows that, I think he knows at least, that that would create an environment where people would shun the dollar even more, devalue the currency even worse, make the situation worse here. I don't get it. So, but either that or he's 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 having his shrinks pulled. He's told what to say, and I think that's probably more the truth. Uh, honestly, I, I don't. I really believe that. I really think. I don't think. I think they all get a script. They're told what to say, or else. Mm. Um, it's very sad, but I. But it's 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 really going to be an amazing thing to see moving forward. I also think that unless, I mean, it has to happen really soon, man. Um, yeah, I agree. We, 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 I mean, a, a move to a situation like that. It's going to be all I can say is this. We're living in very interesting times. <laughs> and, and and that means opportunity too. And and, and the beauty of this is, um, at least from my perspective, what I have told my people 
to do to to at least stay ahead of the curve here, try to flip the tables on those that are trying to destroy us. It, it, it's a strategy that's pretty much invincible. And uh, if we stick to it, we're going to do fine to get through this. Sure. Um, but the world, the world is it, it's it's in a very interesting place right now. It's a very strange spot to be in. But interesting. I'm glad to be alive right now. Honestly, I have to say. 100%. It's, it's going to be a biblical event, Greg. And you're using Oh, I've been saying that for the longest time. You know I have. That's <laughs> yeah. why I leave everybody off every Friday. What do I say? Love each other. Care about right. each other. Be charitable to each other. Because that's that. We, we you, me, the people of right. we're our greatest asset, man. Our greatest asset is obviously God. But then, you know, God wants us to love each other, care about each other, be charitable for each other. He doesn't want this nonsense, hatred, de oh. deception. This is not what it Vision. wants. Yeah. The vision, no, once it wants us to live together in peace and harmony, it ain't happening. Not with the, the, the current situation going on right now, unfortunately. But maybe, maybe, okay? And I believe that every revolution and solution starts out with small. We're part of that, bro. You and me. Mm -hmm. You and me. We have mm -hmm. a voice. We have people who are behind us, yep. who understand the concepts that we're talking about right here, and are willing to say, you know what? I've had a freak enough. And... Mm -hmm. uh and I and I'm going to do something about it. We're going to. We're going to change this stuff. We really are. Raising awareness is is the key. It's it's the first step. And the more people that hear this stuff, and I'm going to urge everybody who's heard listen to this podcast today, Thank get you. it out there, share it. You heard something you liked here? Give us a thumbs up. You want to present a counter argument? We are both welcome to that. But keep it civil. Let's see if you're able to to make a logical counter argument, or you're going to have to revert to a primal instinct hatred. Right. Uh, you know, curse words. Those are the people that you know where they're coming from, man. <laughs> exactly. And, and you know, for the one to two percent that we can reach, Greg, that can, you know, counterintuitively uh, eliminate the collateral damage, right, that they want to create, uh, we get to be the light in the darkness in this opportunity, which I think is the most exciting thing, the currency of our talents. Um, if it's okay with you, before we go to our last couple of questions, our team's humble assertion, you asked, you raise a really interesting and important point those nations that make those moves are going to win. It's our belief that there are many, but there, it's our belief that there are some primary ones. Iraq is being one of them. Iraqi dinar specifically heavily backed by gold, 30th in the world in gold reserves. Things number two in oil reserves in the Middle East. Vietnam, we know what they've got with the Indo-Asia Pacific that came out a couple of years ago, trillion dollars of funny money, Fed money thrown at that to, to pump that market. So there are some really exciting countries within the Middle East and Southeast Asia that can come a prominence with this, as you said, opportunity. And that's what we want to keep our audience abreast of. Um, the last couple of questions being, Greg, now that we know that we're into the dollar's global reign, this long protracted cycle is ending. We seem to have a really rare occurrence, at least from our standpoint, of a yield curve inversion, the Fibonacci effect, as well as you said, the aforementioned Cantillian effect, all seemingly taking place simultaneously. The question I have is, has this ever happened before in our country's history? And what does it mean for the global reset transition? It has it ever happened before? I would have to say, I'd have to look back on the data on myself, honestly. But the, the fact that we're seeing all these things come together right now, and people are aware of it, is at least people you know who follow your work are aware of these things. And uh, I think people get it. People realize it. And um, and some people do. Most people don't, and that's that's leading to our collective downfall, unfortunately. Um, again, coming back to people having their faith in the wrong places here. Um, the reset, man. We're in it now. Quite obviously, this would be in drag down, and I I, I can't. It's not going to turn around. Not the no one here, neither Trump nor Kamala, is providing us with the solution. Um, that would actually make any kind of a meaningful difference. What we can expect moving forward, unfortunately, is this to continue worse. More debts, more deficits, trade deficit, get out of it, more control. We're not going to bring back, a miracle isn't going to occur when manufacturing here in the United States, factory activity is going to all of a sudden pick up. Um, uh, it's just not going to happen. The Cutting the corporate tax rate is certainly not going to force these companies to hire more people. Uh, and, and then that's another lie that we're being sold to. It's not going to happen. Um, it, the, the, what we're seeing here is, is unfortunate and uh, deliberate, of course. And um, people need to start taking action for themselves. They really, really do. Uh, and, and, and gain a greater understanding as to uh, what they need to do. And it's just too easy for me to understand it. But, but look, as you said, you know, there's so much going on right now. And, and with the Middle East here, 
you know, and all the stuff you had mentioned. There's just a lot of reasons why there's ongoing war there and pressure and everything else. Mm -hmm. It's all this stuff. We, we've known what's happened. We've seen it with our own eyes, what has happened to leaders who have tried to back their currency with gold or, or leave the fiat monetary system. They just somehow get eliminated. Um, and and uh, maybe that's a reason why we have the uh, the current situation as well here unfolding in the United States. But it would take a monumental effort here, um, and it maybe maybe it is maybe the BRICS nation is where it's, it's going to start, and maybe we, that'll be the beginning of something here. And uh, I really hoped it would be us, I really, because um, it doesn't look like that at all. It looks like we are in this downward spiral. It's inescapable. There's no one here again offering a real solution for the problems that we have. Um, and it's uh, it's uh, it's terrible to see what's going on to people in my neighborhood here. Just as an example, I live in a relatively nice place, and people here, brand new homes, brand, this whole area is brand new. They're already selling their houses. People can't afford them. People mm -hmm. losing their jobs. Um, mass waves of layoffs here, which yeah. I said was going to happen again the last year. I said, watch what's going to happen this year. One of my calls for this year, if you look at the videos they did the end of last year, was going to see. I said mass layoffs. Um, that pretty much has come to be true. Unfortunately, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't have any magical or divine power here. I have, I do have the ability though, to put things together in a way that makes sense, at least to me. And, and I'm not right all the time. Oh my goodness. I've been wrong many, many times. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> big time, but um, I do my best here. And I, I, I think, I don't know if, if, uh, if the divine here has said, Hey, Greg, you know what? I'm, I'm going to give you this little gift. I think we all have a gift. I really, Absolutely. really believe that. We just have to fine tune it and then use it for good. And I feel like I, I've done that. People like yourself too. Same thing. There's a reason why we're out here. There is a reason why we're out here. I really believe that. It's not just a chance or by a coincidence that we're here and, and we have people that li listen to our work and get it. And why we get so much pushback, there are reasons for it. Mm -hmm. And anyway, look, um, I, I kind of got sidetracked here, but I hope I, I, I kind of caught the gist of what you said. You did. You did. You did great. No, and, and we really appreciate what you do. Believe me. And I, and I know your audience does as well. Um, last question for today, and I'll, I'll kind of set you up with a story so that it the correlation makes sense. A couple of Christmases ago when we were coming out of the plant scamdemic, uh, I was sitting with our family outside and I gave them $50 each. And they were like, oh, thank you so much. And I'm like, for what? They're like, you gave me 50 bucks. I said, no, I didn't. I said, I gave you like $1.60. sixty. like, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you mean? And this went back and forth. I said, well, tell me what's backing the dollar. And they just, well, the government. I'm like, the government? You have faith and credit in this government? What <laughs> asset is backing it? And it was like a blank expression. It was like a deer in the headlights. So speaking of our friends at the Fed, according to Richard A. Stern, excuse me, an ex He's saying that today's dollar is worth about 3.2 pennies out of a pre-Fed dollars of December 1913. With that in mind, once we hit this hyperinflation, which you mentioned, whether it's during the holidays this year or first quarter next year, what do you think the actual dollar will be worth at that point? It's eventually going to zero. There's mm -hmm. just no doubt about it. There's 2% left in it. That's all that's left. If that, they yeah. did, I've been telling people for, for, I don't know, 10 years, they're going to get the rest. They want it. They want the rest of it so they can, again, issue in their new system. Their new system is ready to roll, um, and they're going to do it. It's just a matter of how they're going to do it and what event is going to trigger it, because people aren't going to want to accept this. Mm -hmm. People are going to go berserk. But if there's enough people that are dependent on the system, that's why dependency is so so strong, why they need so many people dependent on the system here. Creating dependency is a key, 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 key to the new system, because, again, they need an event to occur. So great, such an outcry. And I can't, I think it's going to end up being like what we saw last time. It's going to be a locking up of the system. People don't understand what that means. First of all, if, if all of a sudden transactions are stopped, that means you can't do, you can't use your debit card. You can't use your credit card. Sure, the currency may work if you have a few dollars laying around. Who knows what it'll actually be worth at that point. But the stores will be cleaned out so fast. Um, as, as it is in every, you know, you get a bad rainstorm out here in Florida where I live. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, people rush to the stores, you know, when in Vegas, wherever it is, wherever I live, whenever the first thing, the toilet paper, the boggle, remember that whole thing? Oh yeah, they sure. The stores, they clean them out. Um, the, 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 the panic. And, and again, what they want is social unrest, man. I believe that they're going to, there's going to be pandemonium in the streets, obviously. When people can't transact, 
uh, because of liquidity crisis. They're going to let this go on for a little bit of time. You may see uh, an event here where they have, let's say, government trucks here coming in here, uh, you know, rationing food to people, rations. This is not new to the United States. There was rationing of food in right. World War II. Uh, they, we're going to get that again. Um, and people are going to be willing to accept anything here. And this is all stuff that's been lurking here in, in the background. But the fact of the matter is, in my opinion, and uh, they, they, they get to bring the system to a halt. They need a massive outcry problem, reaction, solution. It's always the same. And and there are going to be some, those of us like you and I who have called this before it happened because it's just too simple to understand. That's what they want. It's all about control. And unfortunately, I, I and you know, I've, I've told, I think, <laughs> I think it means also a vast reduction in the population of this planet. I think they're going to um, eliminate a lot of, of people, uh, whether it's via bioweapons or or war or or whatever. May people killing each other in the streets. That's why we got to love each other, man. We're going to need each other more than anybody else. We need each other. We've created you and me, okay, a community for people to interact with each other around the world. You have friends around the world. We have each other's backs. Utilize that resource. People yes. don't understand. They think it's just people here. These are just words. No, these are people behind those words that are commenting here. Mm -hmm. These are people that you can interact with around the world that you can make friends with. I always urge people, make connections in your neighborhood. We're going to need each other moving forward, yeah. period. So again, you want it. That, what they want, they don't want that. They want you not to be able to see people's faces. They want you locked up, isolated, separated. This is a mechanism as old as time. The few have controlled the many. And we're seeing it again here. And the, their little test bed during the scandemic here, now they're shutting down certain towns in certain states because of this equine freaking encephalitis thing. You know about that, right? Yeah, yeah. The, a little test beds. They want to see what people are going How to people do. people react. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and I think this is unfortunate uh, as well. And people are falling for it. They're going to fall for it. I, they, but and even if they don't, they're going to make it so great, the whatever they're going to throw at us next, uh, that people are going to beg for something. And uh, and, and people are going to take it. They, they're going to, they're gonna, some people will. I won't. You won't. People that follow work won't. Nope. But there are some that are going to. They, they're going to do it. And um, as you said, this is biblical, man. It, it, it literally is. Do we have, is the book going to be fulfilled? More than likely, it's going to. Looks like it to me. <laughs> yeah, it will. And you're right. These are real, you know, honorable people, hearts, souls, people with goals and ambitions on the other end of the receiving and commenting. And it's important for us to remember that. So thank you for pointing that out. Um, Greg, it's always a pleasure to have you. Uh, please, last words you have for the audience and where can people find your work? Less words, man. People just just, just, just embrace each other. I don't know another way to put it. You know, that we need, if we came together, Really, I certainly I believe this. If history tells us one thing, it is this: that one person has the ability to change the world. So, if one person has the ability to change the world, well, I think imagine what we could do if we actually came together. We could change the world overnight. But it, so many people, they just they just they can't do it. They just are unable. They're paralyzed by the current situation. Don't let this current situation paralyze you. Take action. Do something, and uh. In, in, embrace your neighbors as we as we have been told uh, to love each other, and we, we'd all be a lot better off. And they can find me anywhere, man. I'm easy to find. Everyone knows. Just Google me. I'm probably the easiest guy, one of the easiest people to find. We appreciate your accessibility, and, and you're definitely making the rounds. We're honored to be a part of that. And folks, if you are interested in looking at uh, currencies or different opportunities, as Greg and I talked about, the dinar, dong, etc. Um, we'll leave a link in the description where it says more. You can check it out and at least investigate and understand a potential possibility there. Greg Manorino, thanks for being here on the podcast. We appreciate it as always, brother. We look forward to having you again next month. Let's do it, bro. Thank you. God bless.